to be withdrawn after they are exposed a stain on America. All eyes on Alabama as Roy Moore looks to keep that state Senate seat in Republican. It's also part of a scheme of political parties today to degrade your opponent. I think the voters in Alabama, they want to see the Make America Great Again agenda being pushed through mm -hmm. more so than they do these allegations going back and forth that he said, she said. The most destructive wildfire raging in Southern California just got bigger, scorching nearly 250,000 acres. That is larger than the city of New York. Table, we got the coffee, we're ready. And by the way, that is uh, that is Stephen Ainsley's philosophy. I'm here for the party, and I'm yeah. here to do work, so Don't that's where we're different. Let's pretend today's Friday. All right, and let's, but you, do you feel like every day is Friday? I, mean, I do, it's, actually. It's I do like my life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, well, that's <laughs> a general statement. Do you not? Yes. We are working at a news channel, and luckily there's a lot of news. There so is. we're delighted that you would join us today because we've got a great story to tell you with, uh, tell you all about coming up. Uh, in just a moment, you're going to hear that. But first, our, our top political story, all eyes are on the state of Alabama one day before their special election for the U.S. Senate. Republican candidate Roy Moore has President Trump on his side as he's denying all the sexual misconduct claims and his opponent is launching brand new attacks. Yep, Greg Jenkins is live in Washington, D.C. with what is at stake, win or lose. Hey, Griff. Hey, good morning, guys. It is coming down to the wire in the heart of Dixie as Alabama voters are waking up to this robocall from President Trump making a final push for Roy Moore. Get out and vote for Roy Moore. His vote is our Republican Senate, and it's needed. We need Roy to help us with the Republican Senate. We will win, and we will make America great again. Moore, who's been running as an outsider, was noticeably absent from the campaign trail this weekend and avoided reporters, but called into a radio show defiantly denying allegations against him and attacking the Republican establishment who refused to support him. The Republican establishment actually wants Jones in there because they think they can beat him in two years without a content. And, of course, the Democrats want Jones in there for their vote. Meanwhile, Jones barnstormed the state with outside help from establishment Democrats like New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, and he took a shot at Moore, accusing him of hiding. What kind of public servant hides and goes only into enclaves and doesn't address the media? I'm going to be as accessible after this election as I am now. And Jones began running ads featuring Alabama's other senator, Republican Richard Shelby, who said he wasn't voting for Moore, writing in another Republican candidate. But Moore maintains a slight lead in the polls, guys, and tonight plans a massive rally featuring none other than Steve Bannon. So it's going to be exciting to watch. Wow. Uh, interesting, Griff. Thanks so much. It's like exciting to watch because the president knows for all practicality purposes he needs that vote. I mean, with 51 votes, mm -hmm. it makes things everything very, uh, very tough. Uh, in the last year, in the last of his uh, first two years before the midterms. However, you wonder in the big picture if the sexual allegations will actually uh, allow the Republican Party to uh, put their backs against the wall for the midterm elections, as if he would be the poster child for sexual misconduct. Yeah, we'll find out. Tomorrow's the big vote. We will. Uh, we got uh, uh, Pastor Jeffers coming mm -hmm. up uh, very shortly from Dallas. He says there are a lot of Republicans in Alabama who would like another choice but are going to vote for uh, this particular guy, Judge Roy Moore. They're going to hold their nose and do that because they're worried about the issues. Yeah. See, that's a great point because if this came out and he still beat Luther Strange, if this happened in the primary mm -hmm. process, that's one thing. But it came out after the primary, so the people of Alabama are hostage to these candidates. Well, and according to what uh, Griff just said, the people of Alabama, by a slight, uh, uh, what, three four points mm -hmm. right now, are favoring Roy Moore. In the last poll. We'll see. Meanwhile, right. uh, you know, over the last few days, it's been the president versus the press. Yeah, he is fed up with all the fake news. This was his latest tweet. You know, over the weekend, he was talking about all the fake news from several networks. And so he's just, he's done with it. He said very little discussion of all the purposely false and defamatory stories put out this week by the fake news media. They are out of control. Correct reporting means nothing to them. Major lies written, then forced to be withdrawn after they are exposed. A stain on America. So what's he talking about? Well, the Washington Post had to apologize. Um, one of their reporters, Dave Weigel, uh, he had put out a 
picture and it said that that place down in uh, Florida, yeah, in Pensacola was not filled up, but it was indeed. And then Brian Ross got suspended for a week and then CNN had to clarify and correct a story. Molly Hemingway says the real scandal is how the media are continuing to push the Russia thing. This is the pattern for so many of these stories. I mean, this is not the first time it's happened to CNN. It's not even the first time it happened this week that a major story blew right. up like this. That at some point you actually have to start asking, maybe the real scandal is how the media fell for this Russia-Trump collusion narrative and how they've been involved in perpetuating it. Right. We should say that Weigel said, I put that on my private Twitter. I apologize to the president. I didn't put it to the Washington Post. You just wonder why I would do it to begin with, because uh, to begin with, because it's inaccurate. It was way before the actual event It was event hours happened. before the president showed right. up, and he showed the arena half full. So mm -hmm. everybody makes mistakes. The only thing I would love to see is a report for the president that's wrong. If one of these organizations came out and said some, a story that was too positive for the president and had to walk back and say, <laughs> it should have been more negative, I apologize, then I would see fair and balanced erroneous behavior. Sometimes, uh, as we know, uh, being in the press for a very long time, you got to wait until you got a couple of more people who have uh, verified a story before you right. rush you, out with a smoking gun. I do think I do think it's more than an honest mistake. You, if you know the president's going to be speaking in a few hours, then you post the picture of what the arena I looks agree. like. It's like taking a picture before the the team comes out of the NFL, like hours before, and right. say mm -hmm. no one's packing the stands. You can't uh, do that. It's inaccurate. I, I agree. All right. In other news, the deputy AG Rod Rosenstein, mm -hmm. not Steen Rosenstein, he was appointed as special counsel back in May after Jeff Sessions recused himself. You remember that. Well, now he's going to be testifying on Capitol Hill. It happens this Friday in a few days in front of the House Judiciary Committee. Right. He's the deputy attorney general. And here's the thing that's going on right now. There are so many reports from the uh, Republican side of the aisle that Robert Mueller's special counsel team is riddled with uh, people from the political left. You got Andrew Weissman, uh, one of his top deputies. He went to Hillary's victory party. You got Peter Stroke, who we told you about last week. He's, uh, he wrote those anti-Trump uh, emails that he exchanged with his lover. Uh, there he is, uh, Peter Strzok right there. He's also the guy who edited out gross negligence. You got Janie Ree, uh, who used to be in the DOJ. She represented the Clinton team and the foundation. And it goes on and on. And it looks like it's stacked with a murderer's row of people on Hillary's side. Christopher Wray was appointed by the president uh, to run the FBI. It doesn't mean he goes to the president's agenda, but he's a guy the president looked into his background and said, we got to get some yeah. fresh eyes on this and straighten out the higher ups maybe in the FBI if they needed to be straightened out. I was stunned by his stonewalling uh, to the point last week. In fact, the lead editorial in the Wall Street Journal talks about Chris, uh, Christopher Wray not answering any questions on Capitol Hill, the most of which is the FISA application that was done before you got there. Did they use Fusion G GPS material to get it. When it comes to all these people right. with their, their obviously uh, pro Clinton view showing up at a party, uh, praising uh, Sally Yates, mm -hmm. why are you not curious to get to the bottom of this? But instead, it was Stonewall after Stonewall. And I'm wondering if Rod Rosenstein, who could make uh, Christopher Ray come forward with the application to see if they're using this opposition research to take down President Trump or to get information on him or used it in the past if right. he is going to do anything. So that's going to be the question. Will he be forthright? He's also appointed by President Trump. Well, Chris Ray, what he said was, you know, I, it, it's a great question. I cannot answer it because there's an inspector general who's going to come out with uh, he's going to have the answer to all that stuff. Just hold on. And you'll have the answer. By the way, that uh, that the Wall Street Journal says that is not true. The bottom line is you don't have an inspector general to stop an investigation. You have a judiciary committee who asks you a question. Give them the answer. Yeah, instead of pleading the fifth. Did the dossier lead to surveilling the president? Well, he was he was candidate Trump at the time. That's the question most people want to know. In the meantime, let's hand it over to Jillian who has some headlines for us. Hey, Jillian. That's Good right. Morning, Good Jillian. Monday morning to you guys. To you at home as well. Let's get straight to a Fox News alert. The hunt intensifying for whoever is behind a string of freeway shootings. Police in Detroit say the same suspect or suspects are playing Russian roulette on Interstate 94, opening fire four separate times. 
One driver was hit in the leg but is expected to be okay. Authorities are looking for a silver or gray car seen during the shootings. They're also beefing up police presence in that area. While you were sleeping, the most destructive wildfire raging in Southern California just got bigger, scorching 230,000 acres. That's larger than New York City. The massive inferno forcing brand new evacuation orders in Santa Barbara. Hurricane force winds flaming, fueling the flames, making it the fifth largest wildfire in state history. Six out of control blazes still burning across California at this hour, and it could get even worse. There's no rain in the forecast at all this week. New overnight, the U.S. military making a bold show of force, launching missile tracking drills as tensions with North Korea run high. The two-day joint drill with Japan and South Korea uh, simulate detecting and tracking down potential ballistic missiles in the waters off of the Korean Peninsula. Now, this comes less than weeks after the rogue nation fired its longest range missile yet, potentially capable of reaching anywhere in the U.S. The White House calling out Palestinian leaders for refusing to meet with Vice President Pence. They canceled the meetings after the U.S. recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. The Vice President's press secretary saying, quote, It's unfortunate that the Palestinian Authority is walking away again from an opportunity to discuss the future of the region. Egypt's, Egypt's Coptic Church also rejecting a meeting with the Vice President when he heads overseas later this month. So look at your headlines, guys. Send thank back you to very you. much. A lot Julie. of news this morning. Yeah, thanks, All, right. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Well, still ahead, Alabama has the most evangelical voters in the entire country. Will they be able to reconcile their faith in God and vote for Roy Moore? Pastor Robert Jeffress from Dallas, he's here to discuss. Coming up next. All eyes on the state of Alabama on the eve of a special election down there. Republican Roy Moore currently in the lead as he denies accusations of sexual misconduct that lead, according to the Real Clear Politics average. Question is, will it be enough for evangelicals in that state to put their faith in him and Roy Moore? Joining us now to weigh in is Fox News contributor Pastor Robert Jeffress. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us. You good know, to be with you. Good to see you. You know, there's not anyone that's going to be for child abuse or um, the, all these allegations that all these women have come out against him. As a female, I have a big problem with the fact that he is running. However, I understand the issue of you have to put the party first because the, his opponent, is, you know, dis, most of these Republicans dislike the establishment. They distrust the media. And then his opponent has an extreme view on abortion. How do you justify it as a Christian? Well, look, for me, as a Christian leader, the issue is not about politics or party. It's about morality. And look, Christians above all people have a zero tolerance level for any kind of child abuse. Jesus said it would be better to have a millstone tied around your neck and cast into the sea than to harm a child. But here is the evangelical dilemma in Alabama about this election. Uh, evangelicals can choose Roy Moore, who vehemently denies the very serious allegations of child child abuse from 40 years ago, or they can choose Doug Jones, who openly and proudly embraces the most extreme example and kind of child abuse, abortion. Doug Jones has said in interviews that he favors no restrictions on abortion, meaning that if a woman decides she doesn't like the gender of her unborn child, she can get rid of it. Or if in the 30th week of pregnancy, she decides she really doesn't want a child, she can kill that child. That is not only horrific. It's barbaric, and I believe it is Doug Jones' horrific, barbaric views on abortion that will cause evangelicals in the end to vote for Roy Moore. Well, Pastor, I saw an ad from uh, Mr. Jones down in Alabama that ran over the weekend, and he says he is not for late-term abortion, but he is for abortion. And you're saying that evangelicals are going to vote for Roy Moore. They're going to hold their nose, essentially, and vote for Roy Moore over abortion. That's what you're saying, right? I think that's what it comes down to for many evangelicals. And by the way, uh, Steve, in his interview with Chuck Todd on Meet the Press, he said absolutely no restrictions on abortion. He later on said in an interview that he was only pro-life after the child was born. So I believe he may be backpedaling a little bit, but you know what his real view is. And Steve, look, and Ainsley, the reason this is important, this is not just hypothetical, theoretical talk. 
the next senator from Alabama is going to play a key role in sure. confirming yeah. President Trump's conservative judiciary. These judges will make life and death decisions about children, and that's why those who are really concerned about children and the future well-being of children may put that ahead of Roy Moore's alleged past. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, out of curiosity, what are you doing in Washington today? Well, actually, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the president a little bit later in the day today. Uh, some faith leaders are going to be talking with him. And look, we are so excited about this president and all he is accomplishing. The Jerusalem decision last week, what he's doing in appointing conservative judges. He has a groundswell of continued support from evangelical Christians. And we love what this president is doing for America. Okay. okay. Pastor Robert Jeffress, he is the pastor of First Baptist in Dallas. If you're in the area, check it out. It's great service. Thanks so much, Pastor. Great to see you. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks. Coming up are the flags that honor our brave police officer. We're going to be talking about that. This morning, one state is trying to make sure that they never get them taken down. And a group of conservative college students kicked out of their campus coffee shop because they wore MAGA hats for Make America Great Again. We're wearing hats that completely violate the baseball. Does this hat have a racial slur on it? What is the attitude? All right, quick headlines now. Police could finally get the public recognition they deserve. Lawmakers in Ohio introducing a bill to end bans on the thin blue line flags. It will prevent landlords and homeowners associations from restricting displays meant to honor officers. The proposed bill comes after a retired sergeant was forced to take down his flag uh, at his condo complex. And one of the teenagers seen torturing a disabled man in a video streamed live on Facebook, you remember this, will not spend one day behind bars. Donald Trump, white people, boy. Uh, thanks to a plea deal, Brittany Covington was sentenced to just 200 years of community service uh, and four years of probation, avoiding a 23-year uh, prison sentence. The judge in Chicago says he doesn't think jail time would benefit the 19-year-old. Three others have yet to be sentenced. I'm done speaking. Meanwhile, listen to this. A group of conservative college students kicked out of their campus coffee shop because they were wearing Make America Great Again caps. I don't want people like you supporting this club. Well, then you should include no that. No one cares about people like you yeah, supporting our club. You are wearing hats that completely violate the space policy. Does this hat have a racial slur? Why does he have to be standing there? Fascism, Nazi. Okay. The student manager of that coffee shop said that the hats violated the safe space policy, even though the school says there is no such of a policy. They don't have a safe space policy. Yeah, and one of the students booted from the coffee shop joins us right now on CampusReform.com. He's a correspondent there and Fordham University student Aaron Spring. Aaron, set the scene for us on that day. Did you sense in there that there might be some confrontation? Well, when we walked in, we got a lot of looks. A few people actually gave us the middle finger, believe it or not. We patronized them. We bought coffee. We sat down, and then all of a sudden, uh, the president blows up on us. Anybody in a Make America Great Again? The president Great of the coffee club. The president of the coffee club, yes. All of a sudden, anybody in a Make America Great Again ha has to leave. And, and to be completely honest, it's deplorable that, that we were vilified for expressing our freedom of speech and supporting our president especially a president who at one point attended Fordham University for a couple of years. Okay, so Aaron, let me set the stage. Um, you were talking during the commercial break. You, you pay tuition there. So does everyone in this club. This coffee shop is on your campus. You have every right to be there. Your, your campus doesn't have a safe space policy. This club just right. designated that area. The coffee shop is their safe space. Right. But you have every right to be there. You walk in with an American flag hat, not even a MAGA hat on. It was an American flag. Which stands, which represents everyone in America. And they had a problem with that. They're calling you a fascist. Well, they called the people in the Make America Great Again hat uh, fascists and Nazis. Yeah, what did they do to you? They left. I stayed. I stand my ground. I'm from New York. That's what I do. So we stayed, and then a couple people said, well, you have to go, too. You were with them. And we said, this is an American flag on our hat. We're not leaving. We're not going to be treated as second-class students anymore. And, you know, we're going to stand up for our rights to free speech. Well, good. Uh, Fordham put out a statement after this because it went viral. Uh, you, you're everywhere. Uh, Fordham says there is no university safe space policy, as Ainsley just said, nor one that excludes any members of Fordham community from any public spaces on their basis of their political views. The university is still investigating the incident, and students who may have violated university code of conduct will be met with the appropriate student conduct process. So it sounds like the people who uh, threw your people out 
could actually be on the hook for that. But what's interesting is you told me before the show that a lot of, uh, a, a majority, you said, of the students of Fordham are conservative. Yeah, so it seems everybody I talk to uh, is conservative. And I was actually at Fordham University today, and a lot of people came up to me and said, hey, you're the guy from Fox. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Uh, thank you for raising awareness. And I can't thank Campus Reform enough and CampusReform.org for also helping us to raise awareness to this issue and get our right to free speech, which is an unalienable right, uh, uh -huh. recognized and, and, and uh, you know, recognized by the university as well. Sure. Do you regret your decision to go to Fordham? No, not at all. I, I think this is actually a great thing that happened because now we can really, uh, you know, advocate for free speech and, and push the university to continue to fight for uh, conservative students and get their free speech recognized just as much as liberal students. If there was a parent out there having to choose a school that costs fifty thousand dollars, seventy is seven, seventy thousand dollars, yeah. and they, they're, they're going to fork out that money, and they think they bring it from a conservative household or at least one that wants to be open-minded. Do you do you? Uh, do you question why they would question should they send their son or daughter there now? I mean, no, I, I don't personally blame the university, and I, I think they're taking the appropriate action and at least trying to sanction this shop. Um, but I do think uh, college kids and parents need to take a look at the political environment of their campuses um, because this is, like I said, conservatives are treated as second-class students on campus, and we need to raise awareness to stop that. Uh, when you say treated as second-class students, do you mean by the other students or by the faculty as well? I would say by the uh, other students because... Uh, so the faculty's fair? I would say so, yes. You obviously do have... It's academia. You're going to have a liberal bias, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen someone's grades impacted because they were a conservative or because they were a liberal. Good. But you do see liberal bias in terms of you can't even say things on campus. You mm -hmm. can't even wear a Make America Great Again. What's your hat. major? I'm in accounting. All right, All right. So you wouldn't see it. If you were a political science major, history major, English major, you might see it there. Right. You, I mean, it's definitely possible. I've taken a few American history courses and other general courses mm -hmm. where the professors were uh, to the left of Lenin. So, uh, I mean, it's just... Uh, <laughs> Like Real quickly, said, what does the American flag mean to you? The American flag to me represents freedom and, and uh, basically our rights as citizens to uh, exercise the Bill of Rights and to uh, live in a country that is free and, you know, basically live the life that we want to live and pursue. And, and uh, it's up to us to continue to recognize that. You ever going back to that coffee shop? I mean, it's possible, you know, yeah. uh, if they change get new, policy. if they change their leadership and if they change their policies, I'd be happy to go in and talk to some of the liberals in there and have so an open dialogue. So you're saying you're tolerant right? of them. I'm extremely tolerant of them. <laughs> I, this is America. Everybody has the right to their own view. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the right to uh, freedom of speech. And I will tolerate that so long as you're respectful. That's Aaron, great. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much for having me. <laughs> All right, good job, Eric. What thank a nice you. young All man. Right. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Thank you. All right, if you would sit through this right tease, that would be great. All right, uh, meanwhile, <laughs> coming up on this Monday, it is the video everybody's talking about this morning, a teenager oh, breaking down so in sad. tears because he had been bullied at school. If you are made fun of, just don't, don't let it bother you. Stay strong, I guess. <laughs> Hard. Bless his heart, the overwhelming response from athletes and A-listers, all kinds of celebrities are on his side, including us. Not that we're big right. celebrities, but we love him. UFC uh, President Dana White, first and foremost. And who says crime doesn't pay? The New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is handing out gift cards to suspects. So they do a survey. Kimberly Jones is a mother, and she posted this video of her son on Facebook. He is a middle schooler in Tennessee, and apparently he is bullied so badly, she continues to get calls from him saying, Mama, come pick me up. I don't want to go to lunch because right. I am too scared. Wow, this is um, every kid's nightmare, every parent's nightmare. So she decided to tape her son, Keaton, as he expressed what was, was going on. It was his idea to actually do it. Yeah, listen. so listen. Just out of curiosity, why do they bully? What what's the point of it? Why do you find joy in taking innocent people and finding a way to be mean to them? It's not okay. What do they say to you? They call me they make fun of my nose, they call me ugly, they say I have no friends. What'd they do to you at lunch? Put milk on me and put a hand down my clothes, threw bread at me. Is it just you? Yep. Or is it other kids, too, that feel that way? Say it's other kids, too. How's that make you feel? I don't like that they do it to me, and I for sure don't like that they do it to other people, because it's not okay. People that are different don't need to be criticized about it, because it's not their fault. But if you are made fun of, just don't. Don't let it bother you. 
they, they suck, I guess. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> but it'll probably get better one day. That is so raw and so real, and it has touched so many people. Over 20 million views there, and so many celebrities have come out in support of him. Uh, the Tennessee Titans invited him to, uh, to a game. University of Tennessee is going to go to his school to say what a cool guy is. So one of, the tough, could... one of the toughest guys on the planet, Dana White, who's president of the UFC, and took that from nowhere to everywhere, saw this. And he said this, thank you for helping. Uh, he, he wants someone to help him find this family. He wants to help them out. And he tweeted this out. Um, he said, meet Keaton Jones, a very smart little boy who is being bullied at school. This video is heartbreaking. I want to bring Keaton to Vegas and hang out at UFC headquarters. That's right. And then Don Trump Jr. saw that, and he tweeted this out. This boy is incredibly brave, and the video really got to me. At Dana White, if he takes you up on your offer to see UFC headquarters in Vegas, I would be honored to host him and his family at our place if they need somewhere to stay. It's amazing the school system let it get to this point. I mean, can you just imagine when the story's unveiled, how many times the mom must have called. Dana White got such an outpouring after asking to help me find this family. He says, thank you all for helping me try to find Keaton. A uh, thousand percent greatest post and response in my mm -hmm. social media in history. This kid is special and we all mm -hmm. feel it dying, dying to meet him. So hopefully they meet him today. It's a great lesson for every kid to learn. Every parent out there should replay that video. You can find it on our website and you should let your kids watch it and see how the effect, every mean thing that they say to another kid, it really affects them. And if you've ever been bullied, it's the worst feeling in the world. Sure. I think most of us have experienced that. But who are these kids that are pouring milk on him? Who are these kids that are throwing bread down his shirt? They need to be pulled into the principal's office. Their parents need to be notified. Something needs to be, they need to be punished in some way. This is unacceptable. This is a child. It's a human being. I'm sure the mom picked up the phone before. If she got to the point where they were taping it together and putting it out on social well, media. Well, he asked her to turn on the phone so that they could record it. She put it on her web page. Uh, 20 million views. Somebody has started a GoFundMe mm -hmm. page for his future education. Right now, it is up to 47. Thousand. I bet he feels good though today, knowing he's, he's so friends. supported and loved and has friends. Got a lot of friends watching right now. Yeah. All right. 20 minutes now before the top of the hour. Jillian? Good hey, morning. Jillian. He's the coolest kid at school, and, and the I other know. kids Thank just goodness. don't know it yet. Thank That's the thing. They do now. Yes, they do. Good morning, guys. Good morning to you at home. Let's start with this Fox News alert. A serial killer serving life sentences for murdering seven people says he has even more victims. In a letter to a South Carolina newspaper, Todd Colehep claims he told the feds there are more bodies that haven't been found, but he says authorities, quote, blew it off. Colehep pleaded guilty after police rescued a woman chained inside a storage container on his property in November. November of 2016. Police believe there could be more victims in Florida or outside the country. Agents patrolling the U.S. border catch an illegal immigrant wanted for escaping a Mexican prison. The fugitive, on the run since last month, has a criminal history of kidnapping. He's already been deported back to Mexico. Five other illegal immigrants caught with the fugitive now being processed by immigration authorities in Arizona. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is making crime pay with gift cards as part of a new taxpayer-funded effort to make the court system more user-friendly. Criminal suspects are asked to take a survey about the judges, prosecutors, even the courtroom's temperature. In exchange, they get a $15 Dunkin' Donuts gift card. The entire program costs $800,000. Let's look at your headlines, guys. America runs on Dunkin', and of 